What are you going to do if they knock on your door? If you come upon a roadblock while driving? If the authorities come to your place of employment and instruct you to come with them because they want to ask you some questions about your Christian values? Possible arriving persecutions, specifically in what are called Western nations where faith is still a choice, is on the rise. Many cases are dismissed, but not all. Charge after charge is filed until that person is left financially bankrupt. And for now, that seems to satisfy the evil men behind these cunning schemes. Whether that will be changed, be modified to prison time, torture and possibly death for those who have been born again before the rapture, only the Lord knows. But it begs a serious question. What will you do if they come for you? If they arrive at your doorstep, do not think that locked doors will keep them out. They are in a sense bound by laws, but those laws are easily modified to fit their own design. If you are armed and if a gun battle ensues, sooner or later, you will die. They will not be stopped. What would the good men of the house do when the wicked men arrive? I will not place my value system upon you in this scenario, for I am just as torn between two options as many others are. Stand and fight, and most likely die. Or submit to their evil intent and suffer persecutions before the inevitability of death. Let's make this a little less dramatic, shall we? What if a law is passed that makes it a crime to possess a Bible? A leeway period is offered for all to bring their Bibles to a designated disposal site. But after that time has elapsed, the authorities are allowed by law to enter your home. And if a search reveals a Bible, you will be taken away. That one is happening in certain countries today, my friends. Here is an old saying for you. Give them an inch and they will take a mile. It will be much worse for those who will be left behind. They will suffer unspeakable persecutions. And in this regard, with that truth in mind, we are to be the examples for them. No less than those who came before us were examples for us. To stand strong in our faith in the promises of the scriptures, no matter the circumstances that surround us or the possible consequences to ourselves. Servants of the living God can be expected to do no less. Evil men do evil things, and if they themselves are above the law, then Proverbs 29.2 becomes a truth. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. The wicked are ruling in nearly every nation today, and at the moment, they really do not care what God you serve or if you serve one at all. What they want is obedience, and they will get it either by your obedience to their will in this life or by your death. It matters not to them. The mind that serves Christ desires to be in the fellowship of his suffering. The flesh fears those words above all else. Persecution means suffering, and we may be moving into days where that will mean a lot more than just being laughed at or ridiculed, more than losing your job or friends. It may mean the loss of all your freedoms. It may mean pain and death. I do not know, but I do know this. The chaff will be shown that they never served anyone but themselves. This is an extremely personal analogy for each of us who have been born again. And I pray you never have to face it. But it would be wise of you to occasionally contemplate it at great length. The days are approaching and are here already for some, where a life and death decision may need to be made by you. 
When are those who have been crucified with Christ supposed to stand against a blatantly corrupt and evil government? When are we to say, no more? When are we to prepare ourselves for the battle? And when that battle arrives at our doorstep, be willing to die for that which we believe in, for that which we profess is the truth. When should we be willing to say to those who are attempting by evil intent to be our masters? No. We will not bow down before the idols you have set up. I wish I knew, and I hope I never have to find out. I do not fear persecutions, my flesh does. As a man of God, I have asked myself many times, what would I do? The best answer I have in this moment is that I pray that I will know, without a single doubt, that His will is being done in my life at that moment, if it arrives. When are we to stand down? And when are we to stand and fight? Those are the questions that you must contemplate.